I previously built a small monowheel which is a single wheel that runs along with one motor driving it. It balances on its edge like a rolling coin. Monowheels have been built large enough for people to ride in which looks like a fun project. My monowheel had some stability control which measured the angle of the internals and modified the motor speed accordingly. This meant that the internals always remained at one angle instead of oscillating between driving up the inside of the wheel and falling down again, which is what happens if you just run the motor at a constant speed. I also built a second version which used control moment gyros to stay stable, and that one could stand still on the spot. But is there an easier way to make a fun radio controlled vehicle which is inherently stable? A ped rail is a wheel of legs and feet. This type of wheel has an internal guide which controls the length of each leg so that they can form a flat surface on the bottom and reach out at the sides to climb over obstacles. I built a four wheel drive crawler version of this with added suspension which worked really well. But what would happen if we combine the two to make a ped rail monowheel? Hopefully it will be stable because the flat profile along the bottom will prevent it from rolling out of control. If we use two side by side then we can use a differential drive to steer and it will stand still by itself. I'm not really sure what's going to happen here though, will it work at all? Maybe the insides will spin around and the outside will stay still, or the insides will continually drive up the outside and it will do wheelies and fall flat again all the time. Maybe it'll actually work but we won't find out unless we try it. The machine I've designed also has the ability to shift the two sides up and down so it can lean to go around corners. So there's quite a lot of parts to print for this project, we've got gear rings which a motor is going to drive around to push the two sides around, and because there's two sides of course we've got two of those. There are various other ring parts and it'll become apparent what those are for when I assemble it, as well as the core which has got the guide on and some pieces here printed with support material which mount motors and servos and all the other bits and pieces on. Just a quick ad from my 3D printing sponsor, thanks to Lolzbot for supporting my channel with 3D printers. It's much easier to make things quicker when you've got so many printers to use in parallel. There are lots of other bits and pieces to make, including some little tabs and some gears and all of those mechanical parts. I'm also doing some TPU feet and I need to print 60 of those, so I'm using two printers at once to get them all done in time. Thanks to 3D Fuel for the filament for this project, you can now get 10% off at 3dfuel.com with my special code and link and I'll get a small commission. It's time for some assembly, so we've got 30 of these tabs which fit onto each of the wheels. So these are the little tabs which hold all of the sticks in, so those fit all the way around the circumference of each of these black wheels. Those are screwed onto some posts which leaves a gap in between the tabs where the feet can fit all the way round. And I've toleranced this so they're fairly loose which means that they'll flop in and out fairly easily. I need to make this project run really smoothly so thanks to Simply Bearings for all the bearings in this project, check out simplybearings.co.uk. These bearings have an 8mm inside diameter and 16mm outside diameter. I've got a little plastic tab that fits in there and that allows me to screw it onto each of the feet so that it's nice and free moving and it makes the middle the right size for the screw. Each side of the wheel has 30 legs or feet so that's 60 in total and 60 bearings and 60 tabs and 60 screws that have been assembled. All of those are inserted and of course those all move quite freely but we need to put some grips on the end so I've made 30 of these TPU feet for each side of the wheel which are flexible filament. So all those TPU feet are fitted all the way around with a screw in each side and if I turn this round now then you can see the ones at the bottom drop out and the ones at the top drop in so they're all really free moving so no problems there. If I run this on the ground then obviously it makes a flat line at the bottom here as it touches the ground so that's working really well and of course if we could lock these in place as we want to or drive them along then when it's rolling along and it stops all of these make a flat line at the bottom so that will stop it wobbling so we should be able to make it quite statically stable so all we need now is the guide that goes in the middle. This is the core for one side and it's also the guide which guides all those little feet round so the bearings run around that contour and that makes them the right length. I've got some more low profile bearings which are mounted on these plastic tabs so one goes each side and that sandwiches the bearing in the middle. Those screw onto the core so that they run freely and I've got three of those on each of the cores. There's a yellow spacer ring that fits onto the original ring holding the feet and then the core fits into that gap so those bearings run in the recess. On top of that is the gear ring that the motor's finally going to run on and all of that screws together. So that runs pretty much okay, obviously those bearings are rubbing on their side when the whole thing's lying down on its side like that, but when we put it upright they'll all run on their edges as intended. So yeah, that's much better if I just tilt it up slightly. 
So if I turn the whole thing upside down, you can see those feet which are now at the top are following that contour quite nicely and it's quite free moving. So hopefully a motor will have no problems pushing it along. And if I turn it up the other way, then it follows the ground quite nicely and the whole thing runs okay, even though we've got those TPU feet giving us friction against the ground. So I'm pretty happy with that so far. So that seems to run all right. If we look at all those feet, then they all come to the right length and make a flat bottom. If we lock the inside in place, it looks like it's going to be pretty stable, but we need a motor to drive it. So I've got this six volt gear head motor with a plate attached to it. And I've also got a spur gear with a captive nut and a grub screw so I can attach it to the shaft. So that fits onto one of those towers on the core where that tab on the motor is screwed on and that obviously binds with the ring gear. So when I put power on the motor, it makes all of the legs spin round. Yeah, the frame rate of the camera makes it look like it's going backwards much more slowly than it is, but it's actually spinning fast in the other direction. And obviously I've been making two of those all the way along and these aren't mirrors of each other, they're actually identical parts which are basically exactly the same. And that's because on one of them we've got this sort of tolerance piece that I printed separately and that fits into a groove on the other one. And the two of those fit back to back so that they mesh. So it's actually the same part just flipped round and put onto the back. But before we put the rest of that together and see if it actually works at all, it's time for a quick ad from the video's sponsor, which is PCBWay. PCBWay is a one-stop shop for PCB manufacturing, assembly, and other types of manufacturing services, including contract manufacturing, all under the same roof. PCBWay manufactures all sorts of boards, including standard fiberglass boards, but also aluminium PCBs, flexible PCBs, and rigid flex PCBs, which are part rigid and part flexible. PCBWay also provides CNC services, including online CNC machining, sheet metal fabrication, 3D printing, and injection molding. The CNC machining services include a wide range of materials, including aluminium, stainless steel, and various plastics. PCBWay's 3D printing services include SLS, SLA, DLP, FDM, and more in a variety of materials. Check out the PCBWay website to browse for a variety of finishes and get a quote. Check out the PCBWay Shared Project section. This is a community of user-submitted projects with PCB schematics and parts listings so you can reproduce the projects you see there. They also have a module store which has all sorts of items for sale such as Arduino boards, toolkits, robot parts and kits, and sensor modules. And there's currently a Christmas sale with up to 50% off. Find out more now at PCBWay.com and I'll put that link in the description to this video. Right, let's put the rest of this together and see what happens. So as well as fitting the two sides together, that's also the mechanism which allows them to slide so it can steer as it goes round corners. And as a result of those pieces being the same, the motors are offset so they nest nicely together and it's nice and compact. So that's actually pretty stable now because it's flat at the bottom and the inside's locked pretty much by the motors. We do need to do something to actuate this, which we'll put in in a moment. And obviously we need to put electronics in to drive it along and then we'll see if it's gonna work at all. To drive this sliding mechanism, we've got a rack on one side and then we've got a pinion mounted on a servo on the other side, and that's fitted on both of those pieces into the gap that I left. So we've got a Teensy 3.2 and an orange radio receiver so we can radio control it, and we've also got two batteries, two 7.4 volt 2S LiPos, one fitted in each side, and some voltage regulators for the servo and the electronics. I've got two BTS 7960 motor drivers fitted underneath and I've put covers on those so they don't get smashed on anything that it drives over. And I'm going to be using my universal remote that I built in another project some time ago which is a DSM remote which sends radio signals to that DRX receiver. So if I move one of the sticks we can see that that thing slides side by side and that seems to be working pretty well. I've got some motion filtering on there as well so that it doesn't react too quickly and the motions are nice and smooth. So if I let go of the stick, it doesn't just spring back really fast. I tried to leave the middle mechanically clear, just like a monowheel that we started with, but obviously there's lots of wires and electronics in there, but there is a hole straight through the middle. So let's see what happens. So initially that seems pretty good. I can drive and it actually drives along and it doesn't just stay still with the inside spinning round and it doesn't sort of drive up the inside and do wheelies. So that's good. I can steer, although you can see it's a bit sketchy when I try and run one motor and not the other because all of those flat feet basically making that flat profile along the bottom gets stuck and you can see it kind of chattering on the surface there and lifting off the ground and weird things happening. 
If I try and turn on the spot, then even weirder things happen. All of those legs extend and it does a wobbly dance and everything goes out of control. So that's not quite what I was expecting. It doesn't really steer like a tank where we can run one track forwards and one backwards and turn on the spot. But it's kind of fun anyway. But other than that, I can drive around and if I'm really careful how I steer, so I just run one motor slightly slower, then it pretty much works. But otherwise, those sticks seem to lift up and the other side scrape on the ground and it does all sorts of weird things. So tipping over with the uh, servo doesn't really help me at all. That just seems to cause even more problems. But let's give that a proper test. So if I turn here and lean over to one side and then we'll try and drive to the right, then actually what happens is we don't get any friction on the ground with that side at all. And um, yeah, it doesn't work at all really. Let's try that the other way. We can kind of turn, but then bad things happen. So I can actually make the inside spin round if I drive forwards and backwards quickly in quick succession, but it quickly settles and everything goes back to normal again. It's actually quite hard to achieve. The original ped rail I built was really good at climbing over things, but this one not so much, probably because it hasn't got so much mass on the ground. It eventually gets there, but basically what happens is all of the feet just get stuck and then the inside spin round. If I drive really slowly, then I can kind of get onto the item, but if there's any recesses in there like this bin lid, it gets stuck again. I really want to make it turn better, so I've replaced all the TPU feet with 60 rigid feet just made out of PLA, and hopefully that'll help it slip sideways better so it doesn't get stuck. This runs much better, and it's much better at steering, because now those feet aren't gripping, they can swivel on the spot, and that means I can make tighter turns without so many issues. It's a bit more like a tank where we can run one track faster than the other and it'll turn. So I'm pretty happy with the way this drives now, and we can see there's much less issues with those feet riding out of their guides as it turns. So it's actually quite a fun thing to drive around with. Leaning over really doesn't help me much more though, we still have equivalent friction on each side, so it's slightly better, but really not much point in having that, we might as well just leave it in its central mode, where both of those are aligned. And turning on the spot still does some really weird things, we still get basically the same effect, where the legs jump out of their sockets, and yeah, kind of spins around, but it's a bit weird really. I thought I'd try it on grass, which initially seemed really good, until it got stuck in a dip and then the legs get stuck and the outside just spins around. And basically I couldn't really get it out of there, even if I ran fast or slow, I can move a little bit, but pretty much there's too much friction with the ground on all of those feet, and now it's just basically completely stuck. I can just about turn, but yeah, it's not very good at all really. But great on a smooth surface.